I am so happy that you're able to join us for this extended interview. Make sure to visit theoffbeatlife.com. Again, that's theoffbeatlife.com to get more killer resources. Hey friend, are you looking to land a remote gig ASAP? Well, did you know that we not only have a ton of online jobs you can apply to on our site, but now we are also sending them straight to your inbox. I'm happy to announce that we will be sending our email subscribers legit online jobs every Wednesday. We have done hours of research so you don't have to. If you want to be the first one to hear about the remote gigs we find, go to theoffbeatlife.com to subscribe. Hey everyone, thank you so much for being here for this extended interview with Courtney where she's going to be sharing with us how to become a true effortless CEO. Hey Courtney. Hey Debbie, I'm so excited to be here with you. Me too, I'm really excited for this topic but before we get to all of your awesome tips and tricks on it, can you tell us about you and why you live an offbeat life? Yeah, so I'm CEO and founder of The Effortless Life. And, you know, we're known for helping busy entrepreneurs streamline and simplify their businesses, essentially learning really what it means to work smarter, not harder, and helping them create the bigger impact they were born to make. And finally, experience that freedom in their business that I'm guessing is the reason most of them started their business for in the first place. And that's also why I do what I do, because of the impact and the freedom that this lifestyle provides. And overcoming cancer at 25 really was a wake-up call for me, recognizing that, whew, I had a lot of work to do. And, you know, coming from a background in corporate, a background of overworking, a background where my identity was wrapped up in how hard I worked, and that meant how worthy I was, right? It was my work equals my worth. I recognized that there was so much more to life. I recognized that my success had really come at a cost. And it wasn't the cost of the late nights at my desk or, you know, telling my friends I couldn't meet them for brunch because I had a client meeting. It was the cost of my health, my relationships, really the things in life that were truly important to me. And so it was a big perspective shift. And that's when I recognized that, you know, this issue of burnout, I mean, not only does it cost the U.S. about $300 billion a year in entrepreneurial firm failure where they're closing their businesses because they just, they burn out, they can't handle it. Um, I also recognize that there are so many people who are closing the doors to their dreams because they, you know, are experiencing the pain of burnout that doesn't have to be part of your story in business. And so that's really why I'm passionate about what I do and why I live an offbeat life because it is about helping people recognize that they're worth so much more than how much they work and to help them create that lifestyle of freedom for themselves and their businesses and families too. So what would you say makes someone an effortless CEO? Because it can be really tough, especially when you're just beginning to kind of hand things over, right? So can you explain to us exactly what that is and how you're able to help others become one? Yes. So there's really three main characteristics that make up what we call an effortless CEO. And what happens is when you look at most entrepreneurs, most of them have one or two of these pillars pretty nailed down, but many of them are lacking all three. And when you're lacking all three of these pillars, it's going to take you a lot longer to grow your business. You're going to work a lot harder to grow it, and you increase your chance and risk of burning out and overworking along the way. And so the three pillars are really simple. It's mindset, strategy, and commitment. And so what happens is, you know, you see entrepreneurs who have the mindset piece. They're working on that. They're told that, you know, you have to work on your mindset if you want to be successful as an entrepreneur. And so they do that. They buy the courses. They read the self-help books. They listen to the podcasts, but they don't get out there and actually take the action. And in a sense, they hide behind this, this mask of, oh, I'm doing the work. I'm doing the work on myself, which, yeah, that's necessary. But until you're actually out there on the field playing the game, you can't learn some of the lessons that come from being on the field, in a sense. And so that's why the second pillar is strategy. But it's not just about 
any strategy to grow your business. It's about having the right strategy for your business. There's a lot of experts out there telling you what you need to do to be successful, right? But what happens is most of those strategies that they're, and I'm putting that in air quotes, they call them strategies, but it's really Mm -hmm. just a bunch of tactics for marketing, for content creation, for lead generation that they package together and loosely call a strategy. When we talk about strategy here at The Effortless Life, it's about knowing what your highest payoff activities are, your revenue generating activities, knowing how much your time, an hour of your time is worth, and knowing where to focus your energy and attention to get the most results in your business. And what's interesting is that that looks different for everybody, doesn't it? And so it's not just about adopting someone else's cookie cutter strategy and then, oh, you'll be successful if you do X, Y, and Z. It's about identifying what's right for your business. And that's really important. And then the third piece is commitment. And you know what most people won't tell you is that you are already deserving of everything you want to achieve. And the world's most successful entrepreneurs know this. And the world's most successful entrepreneurs are successful because they are committed to their business. And when I say committed, this sometimes like pokes the bear a little bit and people get a (laughs) little, you know, put off by like, what do you mean I'm not committed to my business? Think about it this way. If you're a parent listening or you have children, or even if you're a fur mom, right? Maybe you don't have children, but you'll get this analogy. You'll get this metaphor is that If you had a child, would you ever dream of not doing whatever it takes to put food on the table for them, to keep a roof over their head, to offer them the very best that you could offer them in life? And the answer is no, of course not. And so why would you treat your business any differently? See, most people call their business their baby, but they don't actually treat it like they would a baby. You know, they they might reach a point in their business where they're feeling burnt out and maybe they ghost their community on social media or they just don't show up as authentically because they're trying to fit this other person that they think, you know, they need to put forth in order for people to like them. So it really boils down to assessing your commitment level in your business because that when you do your, you know, and, and really recognize how to separate your energy and work and your effort from your level of commitment, guess what happens? Your commitment level goes up and burnout goes away. And you'll feel inspired and motivated and just have a renewed sense of excitement for the work you're here to do. And that is why that last pillar is all about commitment. It's so important to realize that if you put yourself in the position where you are going to burn out, then you will ultimately fail. And I think we don't realize that until we get to that point or close to it. Yeah, very true. And that's the thing, you know, I mean, how you see your business is what determines what is possible in your business. And if you choose, because it is a choice to keep struggling on that path to burnout, it's like, you don't need me to tell you what's going to happen if you keep going down that road. But it's easy to avoid. It's easy to ignore. Like you said, until you actually get to a breaking point or hitting that rock bottom where you're forced to make a change. Yeah. And you know, for a lot of people, sometimes you have to hit that rock bottom or get to that point before you actually make the changes because we, it's easier for us to learn by action or from actually experiencing it than other people telling us that it's a bad thing. So unfortunately, for a lot of people, you have to get to that point too, which is, you know, unfortunate, but that's how you learn, I guess. (laughs) Yes. And sometimes you're right. That wake up call does come and we're really, you know, kind of shocked into action. But, you know, if you take anything away from this conversation, you know, what I want you to remember is that time and energy and willpower, effort, these are all limited resources. And so, If you rely solely on them to grow your experience, I mean, to grow your business, what will you experience? Mm. You know, what kind of results will you get? Limited results. And so when you really start to get that, and that's one of the things I'm so passionate about is helping people before they get to that breaking point to really recognize that it's not about how many hours you can work in a day. It's about how well you are how I'm trying to think of the best way to say this. And maybe let me back up for a second. There's a human behind every business. So if you're on your game, your business might grow for a while, but if energy and willpower are limited and you burn out, then guess what's going to happen to your business? 
right? So it's being an effortless CEO is more about you recognizing the importance of your role as the visionary of your business and spending more and more time in that role each and every day. Yeah, absolutely. And you really have to learn those strategies. Like you said, all of those three pillars have to come together in unison in order for you to get to that point. Yes. So Courtney, if our listeners want to know more about being an effortless CEO and learn more about you, where can they find you? They can find me on my website, CourtneyElmer.com. I hang out on Instagram all the time at CourtneyElmer underscore. And our podcast is a great resource for those who are looking to figure out what it actually means to work smarter, not harder, and how to do that. And that's the Effortless Life anywhere podcasts are found. Perfect. Thank you so much, Courtney, for speaking with us today. I really appreciate all of the tips that you gave us. Thanks, Debbie. I hope you enjoyed this extended interview with Courtney. Make sure to visit theoffbeatlife.com. Again, that's theoffbeatlife.com to get the full interview where she shares how she has helped hundreds of entrepreneurs simplify and scale their businesses. Hey friend, have you been wanting to start a podcast? I know it can be overwhelming in the beginning. Believe me, I have been there. Lucky for you, we have created a new site called howtocreatepodcast.com that shares a ton of freebies that can help you get started. From launching, growing, to monetizing, we share it all in one place. Visit howtocreatepodcast.com for more information. Thanks for joining me on this extended interview. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review on iTunes. We can also chat some more on Facebook at the OB Life. I'll talk to you soon.